Hey, old Smite Meisters, welcome back to H Zoned. So, um, for the uninitiated, uh, this is kind of like D Zoned, or D Zoned, except for Heretic. So, that's really the only difference. I used to do these fairly often, but the maps kind of got a bit on the samey side because Heretic mapping wasn't quite as popular as Doom mapping back in the day. And honestly, most of the maps on H Zone seem to be deathmatch maps. But occasionally, I do like to fire this up, especially if I don't have anything else planned, just for the fun of it. So anyway, let's go ahead and fire up Ye old Wadenator and see what we got here. So, Perp Death 4, kind of have a feeling that might be a deathmatch thing, but we'll see if it has single player mode. Purple Death 4, uh, yeah, I got the weird, yeah, I don't know. So I got weird line endings here. Sometimes, like, the encoding just gets off for whatever reason. It's technical, but yeah, we just roll with it. So, um, yeah, it's kind of looking like this is a deathmatch map. Um, I'm going to try it anyway. Why not? So, points of interest. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Purple Death 4, original deathmatch PWOD for Heretic, registered by Chris Velariel. Velariel? Vela... Yeah, something like that. Additional credits to Ron Anthony, creative consultant, beta tester slash victim. I love it. And Dan Bowen, beta tester slash drumstick. I am, oh, chicken, right? Morph of them. Yay. Points of interest. This level is small and fast. I wanted to try to make a level that was compact yet fun. And this is it. We had a blast beta testing this one. Notes, I made the killer Phoenix Rod shot, what? Oh, okay. I made the killer Phoenix Rod shot when my opponent came barreling down the water stairs after snagging the egg. I timed it so it would meet him right as he shot into the open. It connected and seconds later, all the gas bags went up. I want an instant replay. Should have been recording the demo, buddy. I added a grate near one of the water exits where only a chicken can cruise through. It is a one-way escape. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is one of the interesting things about Heretic Deathmatch is chicken strats are legitimately a thing. It's, <laughs> it's pretty great. So anyway, episode and level E1M2. I'm pretty sure that's a lie because I think Wadenator said it was E1M2. But yeah, well, single player for practice, try Smite Meister skill level. So I do have the uh, Deathmatch threshold set. So that means there are at least 10 enemies in this map. Cooperative 2 to 4 player, yes. Deathmatch 2 to 4 player, yes. Uh, difficulty settings, yes. Sounds and graphics, no and no. It's a new level from scratch. Took about 20 hours to build. Editors used Edmap 1.31 and BSP 1.2x. Known bugs, none known. No glitches on this one, but I didn't use any sky textures, so that seems to be the culprit. Special thanks. First and foremost, I would like to thank my wife for putting up with my late nights, and her friend Michelle for keeping her occupied and keeping the heat off me. I would also like to thank guys at Incredible Universe for continuing to supply me with fresh victims. As always, comments as always, comments are always appreciated. Hmm. You accidentally, accidentally added added a word there, there. That's all good. Yay, ftp.cdrom.com. Fantastic. Yeah, this is a one- E1M2, you liar! Anyway, let's give this a shot. Uh, hmm. Uh, yeah, you know what? I never actually... Let me go ahead and fix something real quick. I never actually used... Or recorded a, uh, h sound on this computer yet. So let me just go ahead and do that. Or let me just add the thing into OBS real quick. How embarrassing. I don't use DSDA Doom for uh, my heretic stuff. I still use Crispy. It's it's just what I do. <laughs> don't mind me. All right, so there we go. That's looking that's looking pretty all right. All right, here we go. Let's uh, got 35 enemies, 30 items, no secrets. Awesome. So um, yeah, it's it's open like a deathmatch map. Who would have thought? And we're right. <laughs> Right off to the races, we got an Iron Lich right there, uh, which is not ideal. Let's try to get some... Yeah, there's uh, there's quite a bit of resistance already. So, I want a weapon. That's kind of what I need right now. Preferably a good one. I'm getting plenty of ammo. 
Oh, that's a start. Let's go ahead and... These guys can do a lot of damage with their little red axes. They also are immune to physical attacks. Heretic has a... If you're not aware, if you're only a Doom player, Heretic actually has two different types of attacks. Uh, there are essentially... And this is like one of those things that I actually didn't understand until... I think part of the way through a playthrough. And I think it was a commenter that kind of told me. Because it's one of those weird, obscure mechanics that never really comes up normally in casual play. But they have, like, physical and magic attacks. Some enemies, like the ghost enemies, for instance, uh, physical attacks... Oh, hello there. Physical attacks will pass uh, right through them, which is always great. And uh, magical attacks will hit anything. And, like, I think even with this crossbow, I think... How does that work? Yeah. That one main bolt in the middle, the big one, that's considered... physical. Or, no, sorry, that's considered magical. The two side bolts are considered... physical. That's why... Oh, there is something good up there. But that's why... If you notice, when I shoot something at kind of close-ish range... The only thing that hits him is that center bolt, which means it's doing significantly less damage than uh, you really want it to. That is a teleporter. Not a teleporter, a crusher. Ah, balls. Lost too much speed. One cool thing about Heretic, again, if you're not aware, is uh, that little issue that Doom has. I wonder if we can just SR40 over there. No, not so much. But that little issue that Doom has where enemies have infinite collision. Let's see, can these guys... Alright, I want to I wanna show it off. That'd be ideal. But, um... Yeah, you see how I just kind of jumped over that guy? Yeah, you can do that with Heretic. It actually supports... Ow. It actually supports, um... Blocking things over blocking things. Pretty wild. It's a little glitchy. Like, you'll notice that especially... Ah, oh, balls, you stupid freaking tornado. I hate that thing. Anyway. Oh, there's two of those guys. Perfect. I mean, you only have a thousand health. They're basically like medieval barons. But, um... Man, so much to explain. I mean, let's TLDR. Heretics more than Fantasy Doom. But anyway. Brrr, where was I going with that? Uh... Yeah, like, you'll notice that, especially if you just jump on those weird exploding pods down there. Yeah, those green things. You kind of get nudged around in a little bit of a weird, unnatural way, but you know what? It's uh, better than getting completely body blocked by something that's a uh, thousand meters underneath you. So, I'll take it. No, I mean, this is a fine weapon and all, kind of, but... That's the exit right there, I'm pretty sure. That's usually... It's not always a thing, but... Yeah, usually if you see that blue particle... Hello there. That blue particle effect, that's... Kind of indicative of an exit. It's kind of like the iconic exit door in Doom. But yeah, like that whole physical versus magic... Distinction is one of the reasons why, like, this is a little bit more than just, like, a medieval shotgun... Because in certain situations, it does significantly less damage than Doom's shoddy. I really... I only saw, like, two weapons. I saw this one and, uh... Oh, Tome of Power. I wonder if that just randomly dropped from a Disciple. Yeah, this thing will, um, supercharge your weapons. It's pretty great. So... Well, I don't know. I'm seeing that blue, uh, thing up there as well. Yeah, maybe I should try exploring some of these side areas. Wouldn't be a terrible idea. Hello. Cool. Time bomb of the ancients. Those are those are kind of fun. Very easy to kind of nuke yourself with them, but yeah. Kaboom. <laughs> now I should probably also note that that whole like Heretic does have its own equivalent of the um, the blur sphere from Doom. And uh that whole, like, physical versus magical thing... Yeah, see, I just jumped right over all that mess. But the physical versus magic thing also applies to the player. I know, shocking. Gotta watch out for this guy. So he has that tornado attack. You kind of saw it earlier. Yeah, okay. He, did, he went down pretty quick. He only has a thousand health. But, yeah, you saw that tornado attack earlier. 
Now, uh, oh shit, then you have that. That is incredibly deadly. Yeah, Heretic has some, uh, shockingly deadly bosses. Like, this is the boss of episode one right there. Yeah, it's abusing him, you know. But you also have the Molotars, which are basically big freaking Minotaurs, as the name somewhat implies. And those guys are pretty much like your cyber demons, but they have this flame attack that's, um, I would say worse than a rocket, because it's a bit harder to predict. However, there's like a little fun thing you can do with those guys, where, uh, you get the Tome of Power, and then the Gauntlets, which are, well, it's basically a medieval chainsaw, or fantasy chainsaw, not really medieval, and, um, god, I'm trying to find the right pattern for that. It's really the weapon I should have been using. I don't know. It's awkward to get up there. It's probably a way to bring this down, right? Maybe not. I don't... Oh, there it is. Okay, that's how you do it. Figures. <laughs> Four kills left. But, yeah. Um, it's one of those fun little boss exploits. This is more or less the plasma rifle. I just need someone to use it on now. Anyway, as I was trying to say... Fun little exploit where you could basically just use the tome on the gauntlets, which I don't think I have. No, I never got those. Not in this one. And uh, you could pretty much just kill the Molotar because their close range melee attack. Actually, I should probably. Like this tome of power thing. So it does more than just supercharge weapons. In some cases, it downgrades them, but we won't get into that. Let's see if there's any areas. Oh, over here. Okay but I can't open that. But like, one example of uh, how it can make weapons very interesting is with the, the aforementioned gauntlets. How the hell do I get in there? Is it one of those blue things, or those actually teleporters? But the gauntlets will... Oh, there we go. Maybe. No. But the gauntlets... Sorry, I keep <laughs> aborting my thought. Let me just take a second breathe. The gauntlets, like I said, kind of like a chainsaw, more or less. It works the same way. But if you use the Tome of Power, they will sap health. And the thing that's so great about that is that with the Molotar, when you're in, in melee range, he will only do melee attacks. And the melee attacks will never outpace the amount of healing you get. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. Oh, wait. Nope, I think I figured out what that do, what that did. I never actually looked into this room. Yeah, there we are. Just another one. <laughs> another fancy plasma rifle. Okay. Is there a matching switch over here, I wonder? Doesn't seem like it. Hmm. Really still curious about that area back there. It, it's I'm leaning towards it being in one of those exit teleporters, but um or th things that look like exit teleporters. The thing is confusing here. I see this switch, which maybe that's a platform. Again, generally that blue switch is um, marks an exit. Usually, I mean it's like Doom. You know, it's like you can like the rules don't really <laughs> don't really apply. I'm guessing all the remaining enemies are in that. Whatever, let's try it. Okay. So that's not an exit. Um. Okay, that's definitely a little further away. Nope, not this way. Maybe. I don't know. Oh, hello. Yeah, so this thing is very effective, as you can see. How did I never go here? Oh no, I did go here. Kinda. In a matter of speaking. Ugh, confusing. I mean, it probably doesn't help. Oh, ah, Dragon Claw. More or less the chain gun. Yeah. There's not very many hit scanning weapons in Heretic. In fact, the enemies don't actually have any hit scan attacks. Which is pretty cool. So I wonder if maybe that's what that opens. Another thing that's kind of neat, because these are basically the barrels. Uh, it doesn't look like these have them, but they do have a thing ID for those where uh, 
You can have respawning ones. Which I think would be kind of interesting in a deathmatch context. Let's see if I can find one. I just want to... Nah, there'd be more of them. I saw, like, a patch of them somewhere in this map that looked like they could be the respawning type, but maybe not. Yeah, these are just the one-offs. That's unfortunate. Ah, okay. We just press it. Who would have thought? Sometimes things work if you just ask. Uh, armor, as with Doom, is very, very effective. So let's see if that was correct. Oh, I see now. Okay. Alright, that's a lift. Got it. Let's uh, run back there. I'm really curious to see what's down in these little crevices. I mean, obviously this is a death match. There might not even be an exit here. But, um... I mean, you never know. Plus, there's still enemies. Oh, author signature. Nice. Wings of Wrath. That allows you to actually freely fly. Mystic Urn. That fully restores your health. You know, there's a lot of little just usable items. It's, uh, it's kind of neat. Honestly, Heretic is a kind of a nifty game. I would say the biggest problem is in a lot... Oh, wait, maybe this is it. Yep, see, there you go. The barrels respawn. And this is what the dude was talking about, the water staircase. Nice. All right. Good to have that little visual. So, oh yeah, the other thing too is there was this uh, little guy over here. So, did that also, okay, that also lowers that. Oh, oh, I'm smart, okay. So I'm kind of just still sort of wondering. All right, let's see. Do we have anything up here? Now that we have the Wings of Wrath, they don't last forever. In fact, you'll see them blink in the upper left corner. That's another nice thing that Heretic does. Is, um... Oh, this is open now, somehow. Maybe that's the exit. But yeah, Heretic will... Um... Ow, I'm dumb. <laughs> I can't believe I fell for that. There's still one more kill. I don't I don't know how much I care though. There's Oh, I see the other area. Alright. But Heretic actually lets you know when your uh, power-up's about to expire. That was funny, like with my whole like rapid fire discussion, which uh, sorry about that. I Oh, I didn't even see that. Nice. Exit! I wonder where the exit is. Just stood there and took it, <laughs> as you do. But yeah, sorry for the scatterbrain thoughts. I didn't really... I always underestimate how much there is to actually talk about with Heretic. It's quite a bit. So that was um, actually kind of a fun little map. Um, really kind of gets the blood pumping at first, especially if you're playing it single player. Probably would be fun in Deathmatch too. Because it's nice, it's all interconnected. Actually not a bad looking map. I think by the time Heretic came out, people mostly had the whole mapping thing figured out. So I find generally, that's another reason I don't kind of stop doing H-Zone regularly, is that um, the maps tended to kind of fit in that meh section. Although that being said, the fir literally the first thing I played this year, it might have even been on the first. But it was a Heretic map that was just an easy 10 out of 10. So that was kind of nice. So let's go ahead and just do one more. We got time for it. Skip to Telehell. Um... Oh, shoot, that's right. Yeah, I really need to uh, update this. This is using an older, buggier version of the Wadenator. When I first did the deathmatch skip, I forgot to have it so that it would try to look for the next text file. So let's see if... Um... Wow, I uh, really did a great job typing that. Um, castle dot... No, dot text. Now, this one kind of feels like single player, maybe. No, no, it's not. <laughs> See what I mean? Uh, a lot of these are deathmatch levels that just happen to have monsters in them. So, who needs a title? By Pat Friedel? That yeah, seems about right. This, f excuse me. This file is a heretic deathmatch level suitable, sorry, suited for up to four players. All weapons are present. I don't know how this will play in deathmatch because I didn't play it that way interesting 
So maybe uh, that's kind of curious. Design a deathmatch level and then never test it in deathmatch. I guess I've, well, no, I'm not really guilty of that because the stupid little deathmatch levels I made, I did test them. And I feel sorry for my friends and family that had to play them with me. But anyway, it should work. I never had problems making deathmatch wads before. Additional credits to the incredible dude who wrote Edmap. Absolutely the bitchinest editor around. <laughs> and uh, Jason Warrick. Uh, he played it. All right. Episode and level, E1M1, single player co-op deathmatch, yes, yes, yes. Difficulty, no. Sounds, graphics, music, no, no, no. Demos replaced, none. Base, new level from scratch. Editors used, Edmap version 1.33. Known bugs, none. And we can do whatever we want with this level. Awesome. So let's go ahead and give this one a spin, shall we? Alrighty then. Nope. Oh, OBS. You there you go. <laughs> Man, it took OBS a second. Alright, so we got, um... Oh, blue key. And nothing marking it. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was gonna poke it. Turns out I just went right through it. Excellent. Well, silver shield's always nice. It's basically green armor and doom. Uh, one thing that is worthy of note when it comes to... Uh... Oh, well, that... Okay. One thing that is worthy... Oh, God, I already see an Iron Lich. So, anyway. I can't go back. <laughs> Great. That's the second one. Mm-hmm. Yaha. Uh -huh. Well, there are teleporters, presumably, but one thing that's worthy of note with Heretic that you do kind of notice if you've played more than, like, one or two levels, there's not a whole lot of textures to go around. Oh, shoot. This could be bad. Although, I do have a Chaos device. And what that does is takes you back to the beginning of the level. Sometimes it comes in handy. This is one of those times. Yeah. This is basically the equivalent of the fist, if you couldn't tell. It is a staff. Ugh. Which is perfect for when you're, you know, almost out of ammo. There you go. That's more like it. I will say, those little, um, fire gargoyles are, uh, I mean, they're not terrible. When it comes to, like, if you're going to be, um, hitting anything with a staff, it should probably be these guys. Maybe, if you can actually manage it. Uh, but I do want another weapon. My armor's looking nice. I don't think I need to grab one of those. Okay. Oh, there's the gauntlets up there. Hmm. And the Demon Claw, the fantasy chain gun. I mean, like I said, it's um, a bit reductionist calling this, like, an, like, explicitly a Doom clone. It does bring a lot to the table, but there are some things that are pretty much an identical match. Until you get the Tome of Power. That's, that's what actually makes some of the weapons interesting. Pretty much like one through four. Weapons 1 through 4 are more or less carbon copies of Doom, aside from the differences I brought up with the crossbow, and that being a projectile-based weapon. When it comes to this, I mean, this is a pistol. When it comes to the Demon Claw, the Demon Claw is a chain gun. Of course, this weapon actually becomes surprisingly badass if you end up uh, using the Tome on it. So, it's always a good thing. Wow, that thing is not great. Was that the Ophidian, I believe those are called? I don't know. Never really memorized the names for these dudes. Okay, what am I doing in this room? Is there any way? No, no there's not. Okay. Got a little maze. Bit of a frag fest, if you will. Go away. Yeah, their melee attack is surprisingly ineffectual. Like it. Oh, here we go. Hellstaff. Ow. Hellstaff. Where are you, Ophidian, you little snake bastard? Um, anyway. Seriously, where'd he go? <laughs> Did he run into the other room? Okay. Um, yeah. I don't know what it is. It's like they'll play the animation. It's kind of like the uh, pinkies in Doom sometimes. Like, 
Like, they'll just kind of bite the air. I don't know if it's something with just the way they advance towards their target or what, but... I mean, I'm not going to complain. Ooh, someone tried to merc me with pods. Oh, man, I still need to deal with those iron liches. Well, I mean, they'll probably fall down pretty quickly with this thing. It's actually... That looks pretty cool. I like that. Oh, and <laughs> you saw right there. You can tell this is based on the Doom engine. Because Elastic Collision... Yep, it's a thing. Oh, hello, gentlemen. It's probably... Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, you know what? Let's grab this. That is the invulnerability. And yeah, you could bank it and use it anytime you want. Isn't that great? So yeah, basically like plasma and barons. Except if the baron were way more annoying slash dangerous because that twister is the most god-awful thing I've ever seen in my entire life. That's an exaggeration. But you get what I mean. It's it's not fun. It's just an... A pointlessly sadistic attack, we'll put it that way. I mean, just like that whole thing where it's jerking your view like this. It, ugh. Oh, hey. Telefragged. I should have stayed up there. Oops. Um, well, that was muscle memory. Throwing me off. I was thinking plasma rifle. So I hit the button that would normally be my plasma rifle. And that did not... That did not work. Alright, so actually, let's. Uh, this is a perfect opportunity to show you how good this thing gets. So you have, like. This basically turns it into a shotgun. You've got, like, five projectiles. Or not five projectiles. You got five uh, pellets. Sorta. And then, like, two actual projectiles. It's, uh. It's pretty nice. It actually turns this into a damn fine weapon. Oh, you know what? And go to that maze and finally get that um, dragon claw. And this is where you can kind of see the uh, weapons getting a bit more dubious. So, like, you have that, which is. Uh, it takes five ammo and it's only really good for. Uh, like, um, it's only really good for, um, like, groups, like clusters of enemies. Uh, I only have one more. And I don't know, for all I know, I'm going to be facing a Molotar. So let's just go ahead and play it safe. I do have a lot of wings, though, so let's just use those. Bag of Holding is basically uh, the backpack. That Shadow Sphere is that, um, the invisibility sphere. Except, like with other things, you can just use it whenever the hell you want to. Which pretty much makes it even better. I don't know how I missed the map scroll on the first time through. That's basically... Oh, that's what blows it up. Okay, those things there, the fire that's kind of randomly spawning, that does a lot of damage. Don't get hit by that. Just pro tip. Pro tip from your, your buddy, Spectre. Now, uh, something down there. There's a possibility that could be a chicken-only thing. It's hard to say, really. It's like I said, in deathmatch, chicken strats are a thing. just sounds so weird saying that out loud, but, you know, here we go. Yeah. yeah, there we go. I don't know if this does more damage. Oh, the fire mace, the weirdest weapon in the game. So, you'd think, because this is the seven slot weapon, so you'd think, okay, this is this game's BFG. No, no, it's not. No, it's not. So, one thing, like, you shoot it, and it's, it's, it's balls. Iron balls. Not balls of steel. And the thing that's weird about it is if you're moving, like your movement heavily affects the trajectory, especially when you tome this thing. Like the whole gimmick behind the uh, tome version of this weapon is that it's supposed to be a one-shot kill for like normal enemies. However, the problem with that is that uh, it's even more affected by your movements. Yeah, so, uh, that's nice. I mean, it does respectable damage. It's not, like, let me just... Um... 
think I'd still rather use other weapons, if we're being completely honest. So, where in the hell... Yeah. Oh, yourself! Uh-oh. Um, okay. Another chaos device. Nice. And another bag of holding. Mm, nice. Yeah, I don't know. So... Did I go... Which teleporter did I go in? Was it... Nope, it was not this one. But at least I know how to get here, you know, normally. It's also... I keep hearing someone, like, make their... Like, just sing the song of their people. Alright, anyway. This also supposedly opens at one point in time, but... I don't know when that is, so... Screw it. This is a deathmatch level. There is a possibility there could be areas that, like I said, require chickens. And, oh, there's the guy who was yelling a lot. Is that the exit or is that a teleporter? Nope, that's how you get to one of the basic weapons. Perfect. Alright, well. Sure, why not? Could be worse. Now, of course, the obvious concern that I now have is, uh, is there a way to get the keys in single player? Because I believe Heretic is like Doom, in that, uh, all of, you get all the keys when you're playing Deathmatch. Oh, yep. Mace spheres. Iron balls. I don't know how to open that. <laughs> But yeah, if there's no keys in single player, or four single players, then, um... I don't think we're gonna be... Well, I mean, we can cheat. Cheating's always an option. Hmm. I'm guessing the blue door is probably the exit. Oh. <laughs> yeah, the fireballs detonated those. Again, nice. Um... Hmm... Or is there perhaps something in here that I didn't fully explore? I keep hearing those guys whining, and I, I don't know. They make weird noises. It's uncomfortable. Of course, there's always the possibility... Oh yeah, it's probably in that other room there. But there's always the possibility, too, that... Um, oh, what was I going to say? Haha. <laughs> there's like some sort of obscure secret that, um, it would basically just pretty much require psychic skill. Oh, god dang it. I. Alright, let me try that again. I think that's how you're supposed to get to that upper ledge, but I, I gotta know, damn it. I gotta know. Now, um. Down this way. No. No. This way. And then into this one? Yeah. Are you... Okay. <laughs> there we are. Oh, haha. -ha. <sighs> ah, jeez. <laughs> yep. That was, uh... This is general faux pas on my part. <laughs> or as we say in America, fax piss. Alright, anyway, so this is basically what the canonical hurt floor looks like in the world of Heretic. Yeah, buddy. Okay. Well, that's... Shut up. <laughs> Just go away. Go away, kid, you're bothering me. Now, um... Okay, and this is no exception. This is marked as hurt floor. And... Much like Doom, there's, uh... Actually, no, this... The way Heretic handles Hurt Floor is... Nothing like Doom. It's aggressive. Like, um... Oh, Phoenix Rod. This is basically the Heretic's... THE Heretic. This is Heretic's rocket launcher. But see how much more, uh... How much faster the damage ticks are? Yeah, you can't cheese it the same way that you can with Dooms. I mean, you probably can. There's probably a rhythm to it. It seems to tick twice as often. So. 
That might be a good indication there. Either way, not something to be trifled with, especially when you combine it with those, which are uh, very hurtful. Thankfully, they're, uh, I mean, I could have just flown over this. I do have Wings of Wrath, but it's one of those things that you're not normally going to have, like, uh, three of. But thankfully, I have a nice supply of quartz flasks that, um, that are, that are quite nice. Okay, so now I'm kind of thinking, because, I don't know. Doesn't seem like the blue key is in here. However, oh, gee, <laughs> ah, uh, face rocket. Or what a, Get... wow, okay, that was some specter luck right there. Holy shit. All right, we're going to walk away from that. There you go. Okay, so that opened that and that. Okay. We're, we're going to switch to a safer weapon. How about that? Eh? Oh, okay. Well, I mean, I can technically get out of there, but let's see what, where this leads. Oh. Well then. Okay. So this is actually perfectly playable in single player. Nice. Not bad. Now, um, blue key. I mean, the other one technically is too, but just nice that it has all the keys and stuff. So that's the last item. So what about the last secret? I gotta know, man. Now, um, I don't know, unless it's just set to not appear on the auto map. That's a possibility. But, um, I think that'll do it for this one. <laughs> and the little introduction to Heretic. I mean, in general, I'm not, not going to rate these. These are kind of more meant for deathmatch, but uh, I normally don't rate deathmatch levels because it's not really... I don't think it's fair to judge them in a game mode they're not designed for. So I'm just going to talk about Heretic instead. So <laughs> I will say, if you've never played it, I do recommend giving it a shot because it's... Uh, it still has some of the Doom trappings. Like, if you like Doom, I think you're going to like the general feel of Heretic. However, like, the way that they set up the items really kind of gives it an interesting dynamic. Um, I, I don't know. It, it's just, uh, there's definitely some analogs there. However, just with other things that they do, like having in that, like, physical versus magic attack, some of the enemies they have, just leads to some kind of interesting dynamics. Like, I, I played through Heretic for the first time all the way. Like, I, I played through the shareware version back in the day quite a bit, like, right after it came out. You know, because old, all that stuff. But um, I played through the registered version and uh, Shadow of the Serpent Riders, um, gosh, probably last year. I don't remember exactly. There, there's a playlist somewhere in my channel. But, uh, and I had, like, more fun than I was expecting with it. Like, it's, it's definitely a bit more than Doom in terms of just mechanics and, uh, like, the item system really... Having an inventory really just kind of expands the game more than you would think. But it doesn't go as far as Hexen. Like, Hexen is divisive because of a lot of its um, quote-unquote puzzles, which usually involve finding switches behind trees. But Heretic is just... Like, if you like Doom, that's going to give you more of that with a few twists in the formula. So... Yeah, give it a shot. Highly recommend it. I think you can get, like, both that and Hexen for, like, five bucks on GOG. I mean, that's all I did. <laughs> and, yeah, um, give it a shot. Let me know what you think and all that good stuff. But I'm going to cut this here. I think it's uh, actually been a pretty good episode. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this uh, little twist. And if you're kind of... Um, <laughs> Kind of disappointed you didn't get an absolutely shameless update. Well, I took a week off after Nana Wadmo. I'm going to be picking up work on it this uh, this week. And um, working on a more relaxed pace, but, you know, still going to be working on it. I do want to finish that thing. But anyway, that's all for now. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Take it easy.